Brakes deserve some special care, as I'm sure you're all aware. We got the leads thick like your mom, now let's get the vocals done. Hi! I'm having way too much fun with these intros. Today I'm gonna show you a couple of neat tricks to get your vocal sound just a bit more beefy. For the vegetarians among us, I'm not talking about actual beef and no, I don't want any in the comments. I got this vocal from, and I hope I'm saying it correctly, Nito Ona, a French singer estuian who gave these vocals and more a way for producers to do weird things with. So if you hear this Nito, I'm sorry. Her links are in the description, give her a follow and maybe comment something nice on her post or whatever. Before we jump in mixing vocals, I'm quickly stretching them to 150 BPM so my title isn't complete clickbait. It kind of still is as hardstyle vocal mixing isn't really a thing, but otherwise the close minded cunts among you will never learn how to do it. Our wonderful Nito already gave us the BPM and key to her har, um, vocal. 126 BPM and F sharp. She didn't specify F sharp major, minor, blues, chromatic, pentatonic or something else you and me probably don't know enough about on how to use it properly, but I digress. With the project set to 150, I'm clicking the Fallen Christmas tree, fit to tempo, type in the BPM, and type in the BPM of the sample, not the project. And in my mind, in my head, this is where we all came from. And in my mind, in my head, this is where we all came from. I got the bassline by just messing around, and for the three people paying attention, well spotted, no F sharp in the bassline. I'm hoping at least one or two of you blindly trust the skill, misinterpreted on how they are supposed to be used and couldn't figure out why it sounds like ass. I am not a music theory doctor, but to me F sharp didn't fit in the bassline at all. But that's what I get from twisting my ears over my eyes when it comes to audio. With the bassline done, the chord shouldn't be a problem and it'll sound like this. Still lacking some drive, so a couple of drums later we have this. This is where we all came from. This is way too intense, but we have automation clips to fix that. In my head, this is where I in my head, this is where we all came from. The dreams we took a minute, but we can finally start playing with the vocal. I like to clone my vocal a couple of times if I only have one take. Separately, being able to control each sample settings can be quite useful, as you'll see later. And on the topic, let's start with the first way to get your vocal thicker. I often down pitch vocals with an octave, then heavily distort it and make a quite narrow band pass in an equalizer. Low cut to remove the clutter and a high cut to remove the deep pre-irritating buzzing. Whenever you EQ something, make sure you keep everything else playing, unlike me who forgot to turn on the main vocal. You are aiming for filling something. If that something is incomplete, then so is your reference. The down pitching and the distortion of course doesn't work with every type of vocal. Sometimes none of it flies, sometimes only down pitching does the trick, or maybe just the distortion and the equalizer. Ok, main vocal mixing. There are a couple of things I like to do first. EQ with a low cut just below the lowest part of the vocal to get rid of the background clutter. And a high cut around 17kHz for the same reason. Microphones can record stuff we can't hear, and while not being able to hear it, we can still affect frequencies we can hear. Might be worth taking care of. Compression is often needed on vocals to get the volumes all nice and even, but besides kind of forgetting about them when I recorded this, the vocals were luckily pretty consistent. Reverb and delay. I tend to like a heavy delay first, in solo this sounds often distracting, but not unlike EQ it's about the whole thing together. A light reverb after all of that, so it smooths and thesses out a little bit. Perhaps a small low on the reverb and it should be good. My head is where we all from. Now the fun bit, vocorder. For a vocorder you need two things for it to work. The vocal, big surprise there, and a carrier. The carrier, besides both where you can land fighter jets, can be as simple as a plane, not plane from the previous joke, but like a plane in its all from any plugin. Be it 3 times oscillator, silence, serum, you name it. I went with Serum as with the current gas price, so I plan to keep myself warm with my laptop. With this carrier you can either just follow the bassline and perhaps the chorus, or you can make crazy variations on the vocal melody. Keep in mind you might have to play with it to get it to sound the way you want. Both the carrier and the vocal get sent to a separate channel where your vocoder lives. In the vocoder you need to sort out the routing. 
In Vocodex, it's done by setting these Windows bits to 1 and 2, and the order of them depends on your routing, I think. I just tend to try both the combination until it sounds like a vocoder. A couple of notes on playing with a vocoder. Nothing makes as big of an impact on the sound than your inputs. Playing with a carrier MIDI or even down pitching or up pitching, the vocal with a couple of semitones has a bigger effect than any of the buttons on the actual vocoder. So play with that first and then tweak the knobs. Some EQing and balancing on the volumes of all the variants of the vocal we made and you get this. Wait, wait, wait. If I don't add some hard style elements, the close minded fucks will scold me. If you want to learn how to write melodies like this, or if you want to learn how to get them to sound the way they do, you should consider subscribing as I have many tutorials on that and much more. Tell us your favorite vocal mixing technique in the comments or rant about something I got wrong or missed. Either way, we'll learn from it. All the sounds used are from my Serum Bank and from the Futumaster Silent One Bank, both of which you can find in the description. Thank you for being here. Bye.